Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Dr. A. Gopal Krishnan, former chairman of the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. We'll discuss the nuclear energy program in India and what's happening to nuclear energy in the world. Gopal, Jaitapur issue has again become hot because the president of France, Hollande, is going to be in India and also because EPRs seem to have run into further trouble. What do you think is the issue with respect to the EPRs? Why is it that suddenly the cost of EPRs have gone up by almost 30% and Flamineville now is going to cost a whopping 8.3 billion euros if the figures that EDF is saying is, are correct? The EPRs, which are the reactors which are meant for uh, Jaitapur, they are uh, under sharp focus even in uh, Europe everywhere, especially after the Fukushima accident because uh, as you know, the European Union conducted uh, a series of stress tests uh, among the European countries to look at what modifications need to be done, if any, uh, to the European nuclear reactors. So in doing this, uh, France, of course, uh, took on the task uh, of looking after their reactors and uh, so also did Finland. And the reason I mentioned Finland is uh, the EPRs today are in three places. There is uh, the first reactor which was started, uh, EPR couldn't be sold in France initially, so they went and they convinced the Finnish people and they bought one reactor, uh, which is under uh, construction since 2008. It was promised to be completed uh, way earlier, I mean, it was in four years' time, but uh, it never took place. And um, because uh, it has run into all these various problems in its stage, uh, in its uh, earlier stages, the Finnish people were very particular that uh, uh, they should re-examine the Finnish, uh, the EPR design, which they have. And at the same time, the French uh, uh, nuclear regulator, who is one of the strictest in the world, I mean, is very impartial and competent regulatory agency. It reports it's, directly to the president of, yeah, the, of France. And uh, they have uh, a transparency law, nuclear transparency law, under which uh, the public have to be kept informed about it. Um, basically, quite a model that if half of that can be followed in India, we'll be much better off. Um, in any case, so they have also done the same thing. And they have come up with uh, various things in the system which they uh, think can be strengthened. Mainly because now we are talking about a beyond this design basis accident. Earlier, you know, it was uh, really designed only to take full uh, care of uh, the design basis accident, but nothing beyond design basis, uh, which means this extraordinarily high earthquakes, uh, floods, etc. Now it has been made mandatory that those things also uh, you should show that under those circumstances also public safety will be ensured. So I think the French, after a detailed study in about six or nine months, uh, they completed it and they have uh, made it mandatory certain uh, corrections will have to be made and there, it's an extensive list and that would require hardware changes. It also asks for, since substantial changes are being made, that ultimately that the entire safety analysis report will have to be uh, redone so that the integrated system safety can be studied and also a probabilistic safety analysis will also have to be repeated. So it would imply uh, even for the Flamenville reactor, which is the French reactor, this will imply uh, a substantial increase in cost plus uh, increase in schedule and it will also get extended. And the Finnish having seen this, they uh, certainly don't want to be one step behind the French and they wanted all those corrections also, also to be made in the, in the Finnish reactor, EPR reactor. But in addition, the Finnish uh, uh, inspections and studies also pointed to some new further changes which they wanted, which in turn the French have also accepted and therefore the what the Finland people thought of is also getting incorporated in the French reactor there. So ultimately the EPR and Ariva is getting overloaded with all these changes which they have to do if they want to sell these reactors anywhere in Europe. Uh, and this is going to add about 25-30% uh, more cost. Uh, EPR was one of the costliest reactors even before all this. 
And now, uh, as you know, it has all come down to now about 36 crores in our, our terms. It is about 36 crores per megawatt. You know, that's the interesting part. When it started, it was 3 billion euros for Flamenville, 3.3 billion euros for the Finnish reactor. Now, they're all talking about uh, 7 to 8 billion. Electricity du France, in fact, has said that is going to be 8.3 billion euros, which calculated in Indian terms comes to 36 crore per megawatt. Now, coming to one particular point uh, that you had mentioned about the stress test, which the European uh, regulators did for the European existing nuclear reactors, India seems to have done a stress test within a month and declared that all the reactors are safe and there's nothing to be done, including the Tarapur reactor, which as we know, has the same problem as the Fukushima design had. In fact, there is a problem of the power system, which is not uh, backed up and so on. And yet, though in the report of Tarapur, it says that yes, backup power systems have to be provided. They've given them two years. In this, meanwhile, these two years, the Tarapur reactors are still supposed to run. How do you look at that? I think uh, we are um, sitting on the brink of disaster with Tarapur. 1995, when I visited the uh, United States as chairman of the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, I had an opportunity to talk to the um, Department of Energy officials. I had gone on a, a sort of a sensitive mission of uh, trying to get some spare parts, essential spare parts for Tarapur reactor. Now it can be said. That time I was sent with a um, list of spare parts uh, written, uh, typed up in a plain sheet of paper with no signature, no letterhead of the Department of Atomic Energy. And I was supposed to go discuss and tell them that this has come from the Department of Atomic Energy and could you sell us these parts. And they were all for the Tarapur reactor. And so I, um, Hazel O'Leary the, was the Secretary of Energy at that time. She had come before that to India. So I, I had also met her at that time. She said, you're welcome, come to Washington, we'll see. So I took this along with various other uh, things which we wanted to discuss, but I gave this paper to her and she was sympathetic because she understood the public safety uh, aspect of it, that if this reactor melts down, it's also a bad name for the United States. Mind you, the days when I was doing all this was uh, uh, pre-2008, I mean, uh, post-1990, uh, uh, I mean, not the 1998 test, but we were still under uh, sanctions, US sanctions. To make a long story short, she took this uh, list and there's a White House uh, uh, group which has to clear such requests first. And that uh, included their national security advisor and others. And they, the next day she called me up and said, please come, uh, I want to talk to you. I went there and she said, I'm very sorry, the White House group is totally against it. So I was told to tell you to inform the government of India that uh, if they feel that strongly about the safety of Tarapur, it will be best if we, they shut down those reactors and uh, not operate them. And this is our uh, very considered opinion that those reactors deserve to be shut down. And they are one of the oldest reactors. We, we have talked to General Electric people and they also advise that it should be done. And uh, then they gave me, uh, put a couple of the Old timers from General Electric who were in Washington DC uh, were um, put me in touch with them and they told me a, a story and some of them were involved with the Tarapur construction at that time. They said, look, we ourselves don't even have the drawings of any kind of that and uh, we were on telephone giving instructions to uh, Tarapur people to make this change and that change and they were cutting and rebuilding and all that inside that reactor. What is left there? and the state of health we are not aware and it will be good if those and i'm telling it as a technical person to a technical person it will be best if those reactors are shut down and this was the year 1996 and today we are sitting here uh, how much 17 Six, years 17 years, 17 down, years the line. down the line and of course in between the nuclear power corporation has um, gone ahead and done some revamping and all that they said they have done and we are still running them. And uh, these reactors are even older version than the uh, okay. Fukushima reactors, which uh, went into trouble. And uh, many things, I mean, the containment is shared by two reactors, share the same containment building, and uh, various things in there. The 
emergency core cooling systems are not the ideal, the most ideal ones. Even today, uh, this is why when um, India recently decided to get uh, invite the IAEA team to review one of our reactors, one, one of our reactor plants, I thought that they would at least ask uh, Tarapur to be reviewed because it, it would have been the most relevant reactor to select if you want an independent, honest opinion from a multinational group. And that is not just American. It's not that all of them are going to gang up and say shut down this reactor unless there is technical good reasons. So anyway, uh, this uh, reactor was not given and what we, uh, what we put before the IAEA team was uh, what I would consider some of the best, uh, uh, two of the best reactors of our current generation PHWR. And obviously we didn't get uh, much of a criticism because those reactors are reasonably okay and new. If we had put uh, placed uh, Tarapur 1 and 2 for such uh, a study, I'm sure in 14 days of their inspection, they would have come out and given us a list of 150 things which need to be changed or much more likely that they would have said it is best that you shut down. So Tarapur is a ticking bomb. In, Tarapur in, is. Tarapur and unit uh, 1 and 2 are ticking yeah. bombs. And I think in the same way among the projects, I would say that we are concentrating on the safety of a lot of these imported plants, etc. But the similar ticking bomb among the projects is the fast breeder reactor which very quietly we are building down there knowing very very little about it. It's a big scale up factor from uh, a 40 megawatt thermal, 40 megawatt thermal to 500 megawatt electric uh, fast breeder which is uh, about a step of 40, increase of factor of 40 and the two don't look alike at all. Fast breeder technology, you know, I myself worked three years in a fast breeder on the operating side, so I can tell you that it's not a uh, benign technology at all. It is it's not a forgiving technology. If something goes wrong, and then boom, the whole countryside will go. So I can only keep my fingers crossed. I wish uh, uh, much more transparency comes out in these programs, both in Tarapur and here. And you know, uh, why, what are we risking all this for in Tarapur with all the derating and all that today? Um, ultimately, there are only 160 megawatt per reactor we are getting. So two reactors put together, we have about 320 megawatt electricity, 320. And you, know, you can just as well set up a, a coal-based plant or something else. Tarapur is not that close to major cities. You could have uh, set up that and uh, decommissioned this. And you are uh, use that site uh, or the neighboring site. Already there are two other um, PHWRs there, which are producing 1,000 uh, uh, megawatt altogether. So I think we are doing a lot of foolish things and pushing our luck uh, far beyond. And this going for uh, Jaitapur will is also a similar uh, situation of pushing our luck beyond. Uh, Jaitapur brings me to this issue of cost, of course, because apart from the safety yeah. issues, there is the issue of cost. And we already have in Maharashtra the issue of Enron, where we went in for, a, again, a foolish project, where the cost of electricity today from Dabol is so high that it virtually runs, it doesn't run at all. Or if it runs, it runs at one-sixth of its capacity. So if we have 36 crore per megawatt, the electricity cost is going to be 12 to 14 rupees a unit. And that cost this is really not viable. So why is Government of India really pushing for such an unviable nuclear uh, path? That doesn't seem to be clear. It's a very clear thing now, now that I look back. You know, I have been uh, studying the Indo-US nuclear deal threadbare from day one. The whole thing has its um, um, origin in deception in a way. I think the uh, Prime Minister uh, did not start this entire nuclear power program, imported reactor program, uh, was not set up with the power uh, enhancement of electric power in the country. But basically it was, uh, as Kakotkar himself, ex ex uh, our previous uh, chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, accepted in one of his interviews with the Marathi newspaper, it was really uh, a gift to three or four nations which helped us in getting this uh, NSG clearance, nuclear suppliers group clearance uh, for the deal. Uh, now I'll tell you that um, you know 2005 July the Prime Minister went to uh, America, came back with this agreement um, for um, 
getting India out of the nuclear pariah status. And interestingly, um, 2006, the Montek Singh sitting as deputy chairman of the planning commission creates a uh, integrated energy policy, IEP, uh, 2006. And it in there, uh, it is built in uh, that 63,000 megawatt of nuclear power will be set up by um, 2032. That's the date, 2032. It is part of a 63,000 megawatt of nuclear, if you analyze. You would find that in uh, DA's earlier books, you would find a 23,000, which was their projection of the indigenous program's capability by, 32, uh, by 2032. So it is clearly a 40 added to the 23, which was already in the books. And lo and behold, after 2008, when the deal was signed, Kakotkar announced that uh, we need a, a, a surge by introducing 40 gigawatt of uh, imported light water reactors. Then only we can really move forward to uh, something like 600 gigawatts, that is 600,000 megawatt of nuclear uh, by 2050. And that would be, at that point, about 50% uh, of the energy. It's a grand over projection, but nevertheless, to achieve that, he said it was imperative that 40,000 megawatts should be uh, imported, light water reactors should be imported within 20 years. Now, um, that is how the case for a nuclear import is built in. And then you go back in history, you find even, uh, Kakotka said this in uh, 20, 2008, and 2006, we have letters written by the Foreign Secretary, then Foreign Secretary to the American State Department, promising that we will buy at least 10,000 megawatt of U.S. reactors from them. Gopal, uh, let's take this out from India for the moment. Let's look at the, what's happening to the program elsewhere. We'll do that in the next part of the discussion. So keep watching News Click at the next part for the discussions of what's happening in the nuclear program in the world.